How we doing? Mark with Workaday Custom Gun Leather again, and we got the holster done. Um, we've been working on this rig. Uh, in fact, finished up a rig for a new customer. I had to borrow a gun from an old customer. This holster is the rent payment for loaning me that uh, that gun, that Ruger Old Army. It's a great gun. Uh, beautiful piece. And uh, for that, I did what is sometimes called a Mexican holster, a fold-over style holster most of mine have a belt some of them i do cut slots and weave those in if that's what the customer wants uh both of them are great answers to that question but just to go over this real quick we have the uh the belt that comes through the back flap this is really one piece of leather the holster comes around to the back flap uh, we tie that off to fit over the two and a half inch belt sometimes that's called an eastwood fit i think clint eastwood in a lot of his movies Wore the holster up on the belt that's probably historically uh, more accurate uh, compared to like a Buscadero drop that looks great uh, in the movies. But historically, they probably wore them with the center of gravity up a little closer to the belt. But we got that tied off and then a hammer thong that comes through that back panel and uh, holds that gun in place. But it's a great piece. Um, a little more blonde, uh, which matches some other stuff that this customer got from me. So kind of matching that up. Um, the leg thong comes through that back panel. So we're going to go front to back. Um, we'll start with, I already had the pattern made up, but then going from cutting it out of the leather, lining it, finishing it, uh, stitching it up and forming it uh, to go through how I do all that stuff. So if you have any questions, any suggestions for other video, I've been getting a few uh, suggestions for other things that people would like to see. So if you have something, uh, put that in the comments below. Hit subscribe. And uh, check through the comments. Got a couple other pages. Uh, Rifleman 2.0 uh, has been uh, putting up some good stuff too. So check him out as well. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. And let's get into it. Got the pattern done already. Drawing this out. This is the last part of a side of uh, leather that I have. Normally, because he's used so much leather, I try to get it early on. But it's when the order came in. It's when we get it done. You see a blemish on this one. There is a brand that knocked a little bit off the price of the leather, but found a good piece to use and was able to cut that out. And we'll get that rough cut out. I'm going to take it over the bench to put all the fine lines on everything, the fine edges, uh, final dimensions on everything. I like to save those brands. You'll see me cut that out here. I got about three or four of those uh, off of different pieces that I've had. This is actually kind of a light one, a little big, but kind of a lighter brand as they go. So let's head over to the bench. And the inside radiuses, I try to use half inch radiuses, which are a one inch diameter. And I use that strap punch, that end punch, to cut those out. Let's put nice edges on those radiuses. And then the straight lines, of course, I use an X-Acto uh, or a utility knife, straight edge, put those nice sharp edge lines on there that kind of makes pretty quick work of this particular design a lot of straight lines and a couple uh, curves and organic lines to match those up but otherwise it goes pretty quick once again i'm running this at about four times the normal speed so hang on we'll get through this in uh, no time flat and we'll get going Straight lines are done. I'm gonna work my way over to some of the radiuses, the end on uh, the corners here. I kind of use like a nibbling technique with the X-Acto blade. And then we're gonna go over to the carpeted portion, take out some of these other uh, lines on this. Sharpen up that X-Acto blade. I strop that. I probably have the one blade for months on end. Unless I actually break it, I can strop it. Take that, push into that carpet. That allows me to push through that. And uh, now I'm gonna put the end on. This is the back strap. This is what's gonna be behind the, uh, the holster itself, which is a larger front end at the top of the frame here. Connect up to those straight lines that I put in at inside radius. Now this is gonna be the top of the holster. This is a top profile that works pretty well for these single action uh, pistols. This is actually a black powder pistol. So I have lining here. This is a suede. Normally I have a dark chocolate suede. This is kind of a tan suede. This is a lighter 
uh, color scheme on this piece. The guy that uh, has this, as I said earlier, uh, kind of blonde oil finish on some of his stuff, which has worked out well. So we're going to stay with that motif for him. Cut that out. And then we're going to head back over to the table and get out the barge cement. On this, you'll notice the brush that I use um, has a tin handle on it. Those are cheap brushes. Um, I buy them by the gross. Uh, they're called acid brushes. A uh, tin handle, either a uh, polymer or horse hair or camel hair uh, bristles on that. But I put that down, then I got that piece of uh, leather with a straight edge on it. I kind of use a squeegee. Not just to make it easier, but also faster. So that while I'm doing the second piece, if you recall, the barge cement sticks to itself. So while I'm doing that second piece, the first one's drying. I still want that to be a little bit tacky so it's ready to go. So the faster I can do this, the better. Again, put it on, squeegee it down. Now a smaller piece to do the edges, I would pick up and I would run that barge cement off the edge so I didn't get any on the edge. Uh, but you'll notice I don't move this. I make sure it stays put because when I go off the edge, I'm gonna get some on the paper. I don't wanna get that on the edge of the leather, certainly not on the front. That's gonna interfere with uh, putting the finish on, which is gonna be an oil finish on this piece, a russet oil finish. So I'll get those all put on and then get the edges done so it's right up to the edge and those will stay down and they'll stay down forever. They'll stay down forever, especially after you get that stitching on. Bring that over, pick that up, don't slide it, put it on and then I get the trusty dead blow hammer which serves so many purposes for me. In this case uh, the burnisher to put the back edges on. Get everything pressed down nice and tight by hand. And then especially around the edges, you may be able to see some of those edges come through uh, when we burnish that down with that one pound hammer. So take it over here to the shop, over to the bench. And I'm gonna put in stitching grooves for everything I'm gonna stitch, which is not stitching the holster together, folding it over, which is most of this. Most of this is going to have free edges on it, open edges, throughout this holster. Going around at the back panel now, up around the end, back down the other side to the top of the holster where the gun's going to sit. Over to the sewing machine. Put those in. You'll notice I still leave that lining on and a lot of overrun on that lining. It just gives me a lot to work with. Um, if anything's going to shrink up during the course of uh, the process, uh, we can trim that off later. But I like to stitch on the edges and then we'll trim that off afterwards. Don't have to worry about anything working its way through the presser feet. Get plenty of right on that uh, cylinder bed on the old Cowboy 3200 here. Again, cannot say enough about uh, the Cowboy line of sewing machines. The only one I've ever had, I've never had a problem with it seven or eight years. A little adjustment, but otherwise, great machine. Take that up. And then when I get to the end, you're gonna see where I trim off that thread. What I do is I take that seam ripper and I pull the front thread through to the back side. So on the front side, you don't see the end of the thread. Pull that through to the back side, trim off both of those, you'll see it here. Trim off both threads, singe them, press them down, they're staying put, they're not going anywhere, and they're invisible once the piece is done. Now get up here, I'm gonna mark my other stitching lines. The only stitching lines that are gonna hold this holster together in the pocket is a straight stitch, there are really two of them, but they're parallel along the one side, and that's it. Now I'm gonna measure out where I'm gonna put that, uh, those stamping lines, getting ready to stamp those, that's what the divider's for. Take those along, similar to the belt that we did in the last video. I got these scallops, I think they're called scallops, no one has corrected me since, so we're gonna go with scallops. Those little curved eyelash looking uh, edge stamping. Put those on. 
And this is where it's great to have a little music in the background. It doesn't go this quick in real life, right? And just kind of get into a groove and put your stamping down the edge. But the most relaxing part of the whole process. Put some more on. Once I get all of those scallops stamped on around the edge, I have florets that sit in between each one of those. And those kind of tie everything together when we get that on. Otherwise, they just kind of look like a dotted line instead of uh, decoration or edge stamping. So get those put on. Keep that edge wet. Doesn't have to be real wet. Uh, just enough for that to receive that. Now, that stamping line, I could take off of the first one. I kind of had to measure out the first one. The second one, I could just kind of see what I did with the first one and match it up. As you can see, the florets are easier. It's a, it's a round design. I don't really have to line anything up. Just put it between those scallops and off we go. Just for the record, most of this video is running about four times normal speed. I wish I worked this fast. I wish the whole thing took 20 minutes. Obviously it does. There's about uh, all good three, four hours of hands-on time. That doesn't include drying time and everything else. So it uh, doesn't include design time either. So now we're gonna take the lining off. After we get the lining off, then we're gonna burnish those live edges, which again is most of this holster. That whole backside that sort of looks like a guitar head, that's all live edge. It's going to get uh, burnished, edged. I'm going to skip over the edge coating portion on this one. You've seen that in other videos. It's kind of tedious, and quite frankly, it's hard to film. I do that standing up, and I seem to almost always end up turning my back to uh, the camera. In fact, a little bit here, you're going to see where I sort of lose track of the, the frame as I'm burnishing. But uh, we'll get that in. You'll see what's happening. All right. Get the lining cut off. Get out the edge. Trimmer the edger. Take off the front edge. Take off the back edge. Just kind of take those sharp edges off. So when we start burnishing it, they come out nice and rounded, smooth. Beautiful. Right? How you treat your edges really kind of speak to how the whole piece is um, it just makes it that much nicer when those edges are just really really clean smooth on the edge not rough at all spend a lot of time working on the edges now I have a Dremel uh, burnisher it has a burnishing wheel on it you'll be able to see it here in a second yeah, I'm kind of off frame with it, but it's a little uh, cookable wood burnisher. It has some grooves in there. Just kind of speeds up the hand burnishing process. Now, when I get to the, after I've stitched it shut, you'll see I use all hand burnishing um, tool handle. I'm going to finish these edges up with a tool handle as well, not just the Dremel, but I'm going to come back with a tool handle and uh, just smooth those out by hand. That's what I'm checking to make sure that they're smooth uh, to my liking. And then we'll get those done. After I get these burnished and after they dry, I'll put the edge coating on. We're not gonna have that on this video, but rest assured it does happen. You'll see where the edges are done as we get ready to, uh, to finish up the piece. We're about, we're more than halfway done now. And hand burnishing with that uh, that tool handle, come along, finish them off, check them, make sure they're nice and smooth. And then we're gonna get ready to stitch this thing shut so it starts to look more like the holster that we're looking for. I'm gonna put a welt on this. A welt meaning I'm gonna put another layer of leather in between that closed edge. It just gives a little more room to the gun, makes it sit a little cleaner. Uh, inside that. Fortunately, this is a straight welt. I can just cut a strap, trim it to the length I want, and put it in there. If there were a curve on that uh, 
that trigger side, which there very often is. What I would do is just trace that out, move it up, you know, a half inch and trace it out again. That would tell me where to cut that welt to fit in along that contour. Glue that on. You notice that cheap little brush, I trimmed it up. Uh, I can do a little more detail if I trim those bristles down. They don't hold as much glue, but you can do a lot more detailed work. And again, the barge cement sticks to itself. So you gotta put it on each piece. And then when you put the pieces together, the barge cement will stick to the other barge cement. So I'll put this on. Now I gotta put barge cement on that piece. Make sure they line up exactly. So I don't have to come back and sand them or trim them up. That welt's actually going to sit up a little bit. And the gun, uh, the trigger guard's actually going to ride on that uh, welt. You can see I wet that down so it bends a lot easier. Get a couple clamps. Hold them together. Let that dry before we head over to the sewing machine. And stitch it up. Fairly simple stitch. Two straight lines just looped around and connected to each other. That's going to be the back side. And then... After we get that stitch together, we'll finish that edge, and you'll see that's going to be all done by hand when I finish and burnish uh, that stitch side. This is basically just a straight loop that I'm stitching on this and come around. Overrun it by three or four stitches to lock those stitches in. Pull the back out. Sometimes with my teeth. Don't try this at home, kids. You'll ruin your teeth. You start chewing on things. We'll get that pulled out. Get those singed. Knocked down. Front looks fantastic. It's a little bit of tooling marking on that from the presser foot. That's going to come out when we do the final um, forming when we get the gun in there. Take the edges off. Wet that down. I'm going to do all this by hand with a tool handle. You'll see how fast that goes. Work out some of those tool marks from the presser feet. Not a big deal. They weren't bad. Going to work that out so it's nice and smooth. Put that edge on so all the edges are done right now. Now, because I'm using a live gun, I'm going to wrap this in shrink wrap. Now, the nice thing about this is the gun's not going to be submerged. Um, if I do daily carry holsters, usually I'm submerging the whole rig with a mold gun inside. If I use a live gun, I really got to wrap this up. I'll put an earplug in the muzzle, and then I'm going to clean this up afterwards. You're going to get a freshly cleaned and oiled gun when he gets it back but this one's not bad you we're not again we're not submerging the gun we're just putting in you're gonna see I'm not pressing it I'm not vacuum sealing it uh, these Western rigs all we're gonna do is kind of put a rough form on that but take a handle open that up so the gun goes in nice and easy we'll put the gun in a couple things you want to get in this form you want to form it around the barrel you want to get that mouth open so that the cylinder doesn't hang up when you're holstering it. And then you want a little shelf. That's what I'm working on now. A little shelf for the bottom of the cylinder or the front of the cylinder to sit on. And then kind of a little shelf for the frame, the front of the frame to sit on. So it's kind of two shelves, a barrel. And you're going to see where I'm going to sort of squeeze out for a sight rail so that the uh, sight doesn't hang up when you're taking that out. Right now, this is a black powder pistol, so there's a lot in there. There's the uh, the ramrod or the ram lever on the front underneath the barrel. But uh, we're going to try and locate all those, form it around those, and make sure that the back panel lines up with the front panel. It's going to end up where you want it to be because when this dries, they're going to want to stay right where they're at, right? So we take the gun out. We'll get that cleaned up later. You see those shelves? Now the whole rig is dried, everything's dried. You can see I put the edge dressing on that. We kind of skipped over that process for the video. You've seen that in other videos with me. 
And I have a piece of sheepskin to put the oil on, on the back side, um, where the lining isn't really visible. I'll do a little bit, but for the most part, on that front, I'm gonna use daubers. The sheepskin is basically just a big dauber. When I have a lot of areas to cover, you'll see I use that on the belt. Whenever I'm finishing belts, I'll use uh, the sheepskin. And in fact, for the oil, I keep it in a Ziploc bag and use it over and over until it eventually breaks down, which hasn't happened yet. Right. And then we're gonna keep working that oil in. And now it's dried, kind of blonde. A lot of this guy's stuff that I've done for him is kind of this blonde oil. So we're gonna stay with that. Put some resiline top coat on, it's a water-based top coat. Gives a nice satin sheen, protects it, and actually soaks into the pores. Uh, becomes one with the leather and the dye and just kind of puts a nice finishing touch on that gives it that finished look a little bit of a shine but not not uh, overly so you see i put some punches in there we're going to tie the front to the back we have a belt so i put some belt slots in i have these belts made up and then i put them in i make them plenty long put it in fit it to the holster trim off the excess that's going to hold the front of the holster the actual holster part to that back panel that you're going to tie to your leg with the leg thong this is going to tie the front of the holster to the back so that it will stay put on the belt now it's going to be a tight little knot just a little short one when i ship these i send you extra lace so if you ever have to cut that off which does happen cut it off put some more lace on it uh you know if that's how you want to put it on the belt instead of sliding it over maybe you can't slide it over the belt because you have other things on there. This is the hammer thong. I have a half inch slot cut on the back panel that's going to come around. Tie that off so it doesn't pull through. And then you got your hammer thong. And then at the bottom you have the leg thong. We'll attach the leg thong. One of the things that I think, at least I think, looks really slick about something so is all those laces. It's just got kind of a equestrian sort of reins and straps and laces look to it and it just comes out really sharp and uh, finishes it off very nice so get the get that old army in there put the hammer thong on and she is done looks good and so if you have any questions post them in there if you want to see something else let me know what you want to see hit the subscribe button and uh, visit those other pages I got on